What's up, y'all? It's me again, back for part two. And uh, I kind of made myself a webcam. I got my little clipboard, and then I put the box on it, and I'm leaning my phone up against it. So, got both hands. Um, Alright, I'm just being stupid. Number five in my top ten raw moments in raw history is... CM Punk's ultimate pipe bombs, or ultimate pipe bomb, I should say. This was the same, going on the same time as, same time frame as when uh, number six happened, Triple H coming back and replacing Vince. Uh, basically, CM Punk said. And I didn't, it wasn't really that I didn't like CM Punk, I just didn't like his character. I mean, he had the whole uh, Straighter Society thing going on, and then the, uh, which, you know, getting older, and then looking back, I actually like that character now, but I didn't as a kid. Because, you know, as a kid, you're going to like the good guys, and the guys that cater to you, and the guys that you feel like, like you. You're not going to like somebody, well, straight edge means I'm better than you. You know. But looking back now, I love that character of CM Punk, but I didn't at the time that I was watching it. <clears throat> but Punk, basically, the reason this stood out to me is because Punk did something that I didn't expect him to do. Punk came out and he said what, quite frankly, nobody else had the balls to say. He came out and he told Vince exactly the way it was. He told the WWE Universe exactly the way it was. He said that he was tired of being considered an afterthought. He said that he was tired of being overlooked. He said that he was tired of being considered... Uh, he said that he was being considered the underdog. And he told John Cena that uh, he became what he hated. He said that people loved John Cena because they thought, they thought of him as the underdog. But John Cena, with all of his title reigns and all of his publicity, he has become a dynasty. He's become what he hated. You know, he said, John Cena, you have become the New York Yankees. Cena punched him out. And, you know, he's in the ring renegotiating the uh, contract and everything. And, uh... You know, he's, I remember when he was sitting there on that stage, and he said, you know, this company is going to go on without me after I'm gone. Because whether I win the WWE title or not, which I will, but whether I win the WWE title or not, I'm gone after Money in the Bank. And this company is going to go on without me, and I know that. And he spoke his mind and he voiced his opinion, not only to the WWE Universe, because there's a lot of superstars that do that, but to Vince McMahon himself. And I think that was what was special about it, because there's been a lot of superstars that have told Vince off, but there haven't been that many that would actually sit there and rant on him. And I think that that's really what stood out about that. And um, I really remember that. I remember saying you know what, I'm starting to like CM Punk now because up until that night, I was pulling for Cena in that match. But this really became to the point to when I started to not really like Cena so much and like started liking Punk a little bit more. Because, I mean, I don't know. I really can't explain on that anymore. But that really stood out to me. Because, like I said, I'm sitting there, and at the time that it started, I didn't particularly like Punk. But the more that he said, and the more that he spoke the truth, I really grew into a huge Punk fan that I am now. And that's what makes CM Punk's Ultimate Pipe Bomb number five on the all-time list for me. All right. Number four, Austin's Beer Truck. You gotta love Austin, man. I, I used to say that I wanted to get his t-shirt, and I still do want to get it. I haven't been able to get it, but I 
I've always wanted to have his T-shirt that says "Arrive, Raise Hell, Leave." I've always said that was that's one hell of an agenda to have. But um, you know, Austin comes out in the beer truck and he's spraying vents and uh, the security and everybody, and it was it was just a good moment to watch. So many great Stone Cold moments, but this one really stood out for me just because of the originality of it. Um, you know, it's one thing to go out there and stun somebody. He always does that. But that beer truck thing, that was an original. And, I mean, you have you have so many. You know, the the uh, cement truck uh, filling Vince's Corvette with cement. You have uh, the Zamboni. But the beer truck really stood out to me. And so that's what makes... That's what makes the uh, Vincent Mann, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin beer truck segment number four on my all-time list. Number three. I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch WCW too, back when it was still on. And um, I remember the first ring that I ever got, like, you know, the ring and the action figures and stuff, the first ring that I ever got wasn't even a WWF ring. It was a uh, Monday Nitro WCW ring. And I had the um, the little Titan Tron thing and the, um, you know, the little uh, rafter set for the ladder, ma ladder matches. You hang a belt from it. And, you know, I used to, I used to take Sting and... Uh, I used to take Sting and Kevin Nash and have them in the ring, and I'd set Kevin Nash up in the middle of the ring, and then I would take Sting and I would pull him back against the ropes like a rubber band, and then I would let him go and let him fly into uh, Kevin Nash and be like, clothesline! You know, just, just kids being kids. And so I did watch WCW back when it was on, and um, I remember when Vince said that he was going to buy WCW, and he was like, I'm going to own my own competition. And... Uh, Vince comes on, and he's like, you know, Raw from Cleveland, Ohio. And he's like, you know, the contract is finalized. The contract is ready to be signed. And I'm going to sign it at WrestleMania. Ted Turner himself is going to come down to this ring at WrestleMania and personally hand me this contract, which I will sign. And then the Titan Tron came on, and uh, you see on the screen Shane McMahon. And I remember on the bottom there was that little WCW logo, and Shane was like, "Hey, Dad, guess what? You're right about something. The deal has been finalized, and the contract has been signed, and it does say McMahon." But it doesn't say Vince. It says Shane McMahon. That's right, Vince. I now own WCW. And I'm going to kick your ass all over the networks. And I, I remember watching that and marking out because it was... I mean, the whole time I was like, you know, Vince is going to do it. He's going to buy WCW. And I remember he used to say, you know, when I buy WCW, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to run it into the ground on purpose. And it's just a great, great moment for me. Unexpected, completely shocking, the shock value of it. I remember, um, you know, sitting there watch it with, watching it with uh, my entire family. And uh, that was really when my entire family started to get into it because it was just me. But uh, that was when my mom and my brothers and everybody uh, really started to get more into it was um, on that night. And just uh, everybody was marking out. And it was just a great moment. And uh, so that's why Shane buying WCW from under Vince's nose makes number three on the all-time list for me. All right, number two. Got a Chris Jericho moment again. Chris Jericho has two moments in my top ten, so if that doesn't tell you how great this guy is, how much of a legend this guy is, I think it should speak for itself. As I just mentioned, I used to watch WCW also with WWF back when it was on. 
and uh, I remember Jericho being one of my more favorite guys in WCW and I remember hearing that Jericho was possibly coming to the WWE and WWF then at the time and I remember that little millennium clock every so often would uh, come on and uh, I remember uh, that night August 9th 1999 the rocks in the ring cutting a promo and uh, then that millennium clock comes on I think it started at like 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 Three, two, one, black. Break the walls down. Jericho comes out and starts ranting on The Rock on his first night in the WWF. And I knew right there in that moment, okay, he just got here. And he's already ranting on The Rock. This guy is going to be a superstar. This guy is going to be a legend. This guy is going to be a future Hall of Famer. and look at everything that Jericho has done. I was right. Debut of Jericho. Just everything about it was perfect. Everything about it was perfect. And um, Jericho would go on to spend uh, 13 years um, in the WWE. Of course, he's still here right now. 13-year um, career thus far and so many great moments. Undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, first guy to do that, beat The Rock in Austin in the same night. Of course, his debut, Save Us Return, uh, End of the World as You Know It Return. So many different great Jericho moments, but I think that the debut of the debut of Y2J, the thing that started everything, really um, kind of stands out to me um, because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have had these 13 years. And so I think that that's what puts uh, Jericho's WWF debut number two on my all-time list. All right, getting down to business. Number one, I got two and a half minutes left. Stephanie and Test wedding. Not so much the wedding, but what Triple H did during the wedding. And actually, everybody's got jokes going on right now. Uh, I hope Daniel Bryan and AJ didn't invite Triple H to their wedding because we all know what happens when Triple H goes to a WWE wedding. And, I mean, you had him interrupt um, Edge and Vicky's wedding. Just a bunch of different wedding shenanigans that Triple H has. But um, I, think, I think the Stephanie and Test wedding really stood out to me because, I mean, that, once again, this is when I was a kid. You know, I'm... I don't even know, 10, 11 years old at this time, back when I thought everything was real, and um, I just remember thinking Triple H was a dick. I'm like, dude, how could you do that? He got her drunk, he took her to a drive through you said I do, pretending to be her, and now she's married to you, and <laughs> it was, it's a great moment uh, to be a kid, and I was... I was yelling at the TV as, that's sick, that's disgusting, how could you do that? You know, and of course now, knowing that that was part of the uh, script and everything, but uh, of course you got uh, Stephanie in the ring crying, I hate you, I hate you, and Tess getting pissed off. It was just a great raw moment for me, and um, Triple H is just one of those guys who can make anything interesting, and... Um, of course, Stephanie and Triple H married in real life. We all know that story. But I think that uh, Stephanie, or I think that Triple H interrupting Stephanie and Tess' wedding on Raw and showing the clip of uh, him marrying her uh, in the drive-thru um, really topped it off for me. That was a great moment. A great moment to be a kid. Great moment to be a WWE fan, WWF at the time. And uh, that's my top ten. So, I'll see you guys later with another video. Peace.